ladies and gentlemen. It's so nice to see you today. Uh, this is Scott McDonald, and the uh, illustrated man next to me is Mike Green, whose camera is, frankly, deciding to do other things right now. So we're going to be talking today about uh, kind of we're going through a series of how to uh, analyze things and to determine what to do based upon products and services that we offer that may not be available to everybody. We were talking about the uh, practice site viability report where you're analyzing one particular location. We talked about the best sites report where you're taking a large geographic area and then trying to weed them out to find the five best locations that might work for you. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to market your practice and uh, market segmentation theory, which is so hard to fathom. Uh, but I have a great PowerPoint we're going to be uh, going through in just a second. Uh, but I will just say today it is uh, April, and what a lovely day it was. Uh, we have our mask mandate in Utah, which is going to be off. So I'm kind of looking forward to doing that. So. Bear with me for a second while I share my screen. And we're going to jump into this with both feet. And if by any chance I do something wrong, Mike, let me know. Now, market research and marketing your practice uh, is a little different. Now, there are lots of people who will say, oh, I market I know all about that, but unfortunately, they really don't know enough about the theories of how practices are promoted. And I don't want to say that I wrote the book, but <laughs> I wrote the book. So here's the thing you ought to understand. At Dr. Demographics, uh, we uh, are all about knowing where to move, start a business or practice, and promote your efforts to get the most out of the location that you're in. Now, not all locations are the same, obviously. We are dealing with the where issues uh, that, that are going to be important for you to know. So what I'm doing is I'm giving away all the trade secrets. And you may say, well, come on, how do you do that? I'm not really holding anything back because the truth is there are some things that you're not going to be able to do unless you've been doing this now for more than 34, 35 years. Uh, and nobody wants to spend the money to get all the data that we do. So I'm not really giving anything away, but I do want you to understand the methodology that we're going through as we calculate how to promote your efforts. Now, ultimately, all marketing is going to do this. It's going to increase the patient and production. Those are your goals. You see, there are some people who say, oh, I'm here to make you a lot of money. Well, that would be lovely. But the way that you operationalize that is you say, well, first of all, we got to get more people in the door and we have to be able to earn a reasonable living for the people who come in. You can give lots of services away. And if you were to do that, um, the truth is, yeah, you'll have lots of people come in, but you won't make any money at it. You can also do things where you're going to make a boatload of money, but nobody will come back to you get your services. And so ultimately, we have to be a little careful about who we are trying to get and how we are going to promote the practice. Patience, your business, does not come from a generic source. And what I'm saying by that is all people are different. They're unique in what their wants and their needs are. So if we go on that assumption that people are unique, you have to know something about them. Now, let me give you a quick, quick example. Are men the same as women? Well, there are some people who say, oh, I don't know. I haven't decided if I'm a man or a woman. The truth is men and women often want different things in their lives. And the same thing is true of older people wanting something different from younger people. There are people who are going to be educated who will want something different than people with no schooling. Uh, and so given the fact that manifestations of people's wants and needs are really come from their demographic backgrounds, there are ways that we go about investigating this, and it's usually called psychographics. 
That is the thing that will determine people's wants and their needs. And we will designate them based upon a patient type. Now we didn't, or a population type. We didn't invent this. This was actually invented by Arnold Mitchell back in the 1970s. And he wrote the book, The Nine American Lifestyles. Brilliant book. And they're still using his demographic technologies to classify populations and to make them effective of how you're finding out about people and how to get your services to be desired by them or to make an appeal that will be rational what those people want. Now, they refer to that as a VALS style, uh, study, a values and lifestyle study. That is what our marketing reports are. Yes, there are others who have done this over the years, but we have applied them to healthcare. And that's based upon some great research, which you can Google on the health, um, well, the health behavior model. Uh, it, it goes into certain factors that people designate of how you get people to want and need anything within healthcare. Psychographics is the classification of it. Now, in the early days, they had lots of very politically incorrect names for this. There were the shotguns and pickups and the tobacco roadies, but they don't use those anymore because they were offending too many people when they found out what group they were designated as. No, now we use uh, uh, other kinds of names. Uh, and I'll go into what some of those are later, but the idea is the research exists to be able to designate how many people are there that are in the laptops and lattes group within your area what are they like? How desirable are they? And how do they manifest their desires for your services? Now, I'm bringing this up because we offer a marketing report. The marketing report is actually a values and lifestyles study of the population who live and work within a reasonable radius of your office. That's your patient base, or your customer base. Relationships exist between geography and psychography. Meaning, you can't just say, tell me about how many people all over the place are gonna want my service. Yes, I know that a lot of doctors say, I serve everybody. But the reality is they don't necessarily want everybody. They want a limited sector of the population that they can understand and that they can motivate because they understand them to come in and get that care. There is a geographic component, and often it's done in drive time radii. Now, I won't go into this too deeply, but we prefer to use drive time as opposed to a simple make-believe circle graph. Most people sell demographic information based upon how many miles you are within a radius of an office, a business, a site. The problem with it is, is it ignores rivers, mountains, streams, freeways, and people act as though those things are real. So we need to know the geographic delimiters, and then we have to identify who lives within those areas to be able to, to find out how to motivate them to action. Now, marketing is the process of targeting your communications. Literally, it, it refers to the idea that we have a specific message, which is what a targeted communication is, to the population that is there. You're not trying to say, we want everybody. You're trying to say, we want to get the people who we want to serve. Now, real quick example, let's talk orthodontics. Orthodontists want to serve usually teens, adolescents. And you really have to understand how many 14 or 15 year olds there are, not because that's where all your starts are going to be in ortho, but in order to have a successful ortho practice, you're going to probably want to know what the adolescent market's like. That is how the process works and, and how market segmentation theory is. So if you say we're trying to get to those people who are 14-year-olds, but more specifically the parents of 14-year-olds, we have to understand what that market is like. The groups tend to dominate the geographic area that they're in. So I'm saying the people who might be on the east coast of Florida 
on the southern part are going to be different than the people in the northern part of Florida. They're going to be a different kind of population. And you need to understand who dominates in order to decide whether a place is good to put a practice, but more importantly, how do we promote the practice within that area? There are value indicators, therefore, that those people will tend to have. Now, what Mike and I do is we will look at the demography but and the psychographics, the lifestyles, of the people that determine what values those people have, and then to help craft messages that are going to be communicated, meaning, in other words, what are you going to say? But you also have to figure out how are you going to communicate that to people. So you're going to designate these messaging keys. That, that is the things that you're going to say within your message that people will say, oh, that's what I want. So it's not a thing that's done just because we're creative. It's good research. With the idea of messaging keys, you also know how to apply the media. Now, to give you an example, is everybody going to be available to the internet or on the internet? The answer is no. And even if they are on the internet, is every uh, channel or message or website or whatever on the internet going to be the appropriate one for you to reach these people? The answer is no. You have to apply a media strategy. But that usually comes because of the process we're following of targeting communications. Now, once again, some people are going to say, I think that sounds like public relations. It sounds like advertising. And it is. But it's not always limited to healthcare. But the more you understand how healthcare works, people are going to be excited about seeking your particular services because you've communicated to them using media that they care about and messages that make them act. I hope that's not too hard. Now, to do this, I created a thing called the marketing report. And if you go to Dr. Demographics, drdemographics.com, you can look for a marketing report. It is fairly unique in all of the demographic facts that are out there about people because it's intended to be, how do I message the population I want to reach? And you want to know who should I be trying to reach? Now, in order to do this, we need to have a specific address. You don't say a huge area, like an entire state. You're usually saying, within a fairly narrow geographic area, how do we get those people to act? And therefore, you want to know their address. Why? Well, one of those reasons is because the proximity of their address to your office is going to be important. There's a limit to how far people are willing to travel to get to you. That's why a specific address matters. It, it's why you need to have a way to uh, market the practice, you know, use media, and that is address specific as well as population specific. And ultimately, you have to have a summary of the findings that you get, and we share that with you. Now, look, I know you. We, we don't necessarily have to tell you as much as we do, but the people we work with usually are doctors, and they're pretty smart. It doesn't mean that they understand the demographics, but we want to explain what the data, what the research is telling us. We're going to give you marketing recommendations that come with this marketing report that said, if you've got a population and you want to move them to act, what are you going to have to do? Well, the research has already been done. You just need to be able to apply it to the type of practice or business that you have in that specific area. Now, this is not the most difficult thing there is to know in the world. However, it is not simple. Now, I bring this up because I like to, to try to tell you as much as I possibly can so that when you get the information, you go, oh, I know that I'm here. The people I'm trying to reach are there. Here's what those people are like. Here's the media that's going to work within that market. And ultimately, you will have success. The problem is trying to use a blunderbuss. 
No, really, if you want to compare it, it you ought to be using a bullet, uh, a bullet that is going to strike just a, a specific target and to get those people to action. And you don't want to waste a lot of money in order to do that. Without targeting, you are using a blunderbuss in which basically you shoot this thing that has a big bell on the end of the barrel, and it will tend to explode and hit a large number of things, but not very effectively. That is why we refer to this as target marketing. The marketing plan is going to tell you who you should approach, how, how they are changing, and what's going to happen in the future. COVID changed a lot of things. A lot of people moved. But not only that, it changed the way that people think about things. It, it changed their relationship to dental practices or medical practices. That's why we refer to this as a site-specific marketing product. I want to thank all of you for being so patient to stick with us. If you'd like to know more, please visit us at drdemographics.com or write to us at info at drdemographics.com. Check out the marketing report. It's not that expensive, and it will tell you so much that you didn't know about the perfect place to put a practice and ultimately how to grow your practice effectively so that other people will want to come in and receive your services and pay you lots and lots of money. Everybody, thank you so much for watching, and uh, we look forward to talking to you in the future. Please take care. <music>